All right, we're going to uh, take a look at another application of the derivative. This time we're going to use uh, the derivative to help us solve equations. This is called Newton's method. Okay, so you got any equation. Um, the thing is, if whatever equation you have, you've got stuff on one side of the equation, you know, some function of x on one side equals some other function of x on the other side, and you're trying to find the x that makes it true. Well, what I really want to do is I want to get everything on one side of the equation, all right? Uh, so, sorry, f. So this would, if I had two different things, I'd subtract them all over, and it'd look like this. So g of x minus h of x equals zero, which I'm just going to say looks like this. Okay, so this is this is the form I want. f of x equals zero. If you have any other kind of equation, subtract everything over to one side, and you've got this. So this is what Newton's method is going to apply to. So essentially, what we're going to be doing is using met Newton's method to find x-intercepts. That is to say, solve this equation is the same as saying find the x-intercepts for this function f. Right. So you've got this graph now of, you know y equals f of x. And what we're looking for is that point right there. Now we've been doing all sorts of, you know, um, algebra throughout your life here trying to find ways of solving equations. Now Newton's method is not going to actually find this point for us. It's going to just give us better and better approximations. This is a numerical method. So what we do is this. We, um, step one, take a guess. Right. and x equals some x0. So you're going to plug in, you're going to take some x0 here, and you say, I think that's my, I think that's the x-intercept. Now, probably you're wrong, but maybe you're right. So you check. Check f of x0, right? Is it equal to 0? If yes, that was a really good guess, and we're done. We've got our solution. If not, then do this. All right? I'll, I'll write it in words. I'll draw the picture. I'm going to look at this thing. So I already know that f of x0 is not equal to 0. So I'm somewhere off. So now I'm going to draw the tangent line here. And look at where the tangent line crosses the x-axis. I really want to know where the function crosses the x-axis. But I'll say, well, you know, the tangent line is a pretty good approximation to the function. And so the tangent line's x-intercept maybe would be a good approximation to where the function has an x-intercept. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to find this point, which we're going to call x1. Okay. So what I need to do down here is, if not, then calculate x1 by, and now I'm going to come up with a formula here, that x1 equals, but I need to think about it up here. Um, the thing that I see here is that this distance divided by that distance is the slope of that red line. Right? Well, this vertical distance is the y-coordinate here minus the y-coordinate there. Well, it's just the y-coordinate there. Well, how do you find the y-coordinate right there? That's f of x0. right? So f of x0 divided by the run down here, which would be x0 minus x1, should equal the slope of the red line. But what is the slope of the red line? The slope of the red line is the derivative of the function. Right? So I've got f of x0 divided by x0 minus x1 equals f prime at x0. So what I want to do now is I want to solve for x1. Uh, in particular, if I've got f x0 on the top, divide by f prime, not x prime, f prime of x0, and then multiply this over, this is x0 minus x1. Solving for x1, I get that x1 is x0 minus f of x0 divided by f prime of x0. 
couple of quick things to note about uh, this formula. Note, if for instance, x0 was already the right guess, that is f of x0 here is 0, then x1 would be equal to x0 because this wouldn't change at all. Right? Um, if this is a 0 on the top, then you're going to be x0 minus 0, and x1 would just be the same as x0. So we'll get the same result. So if we've got, a, we've got an answer that's right, then this will stay right. Okay. The other thing to note is that if f prime of x0 is equal to 0, that is if I happen to, to hit a spot where the horizontal line is, sorry, the tangent line is horizontal, then this is going to, this is going to give me a, an error and because the tangent line wouldn't actually hit the x-axis because it would be a horizontal line. But anyway, um, this is, this is the, the way we calculate the next guess. right? Um, and so if we've calculated our next guess this way, then what we're going to do is say, you know, 3, check, is f of x1 equal to 0, right? If yes, then we're done. If not, then do this process again and calculate x2 in the same way. Back up on the picture here, we're saying, we'll zoom in a little bit here. Now I'm going to say, all right. Uh, now I'm going to plug this point in and look at the tangent line right there and see where that intercepts. Well, after a couple iterations, you might think that you know, we're going to be getting pretty close. And in fact, Newton's method really does converge very fast um, when it most of the time it converges really fast once in a while, and we'll see in, in future videos where this kind of breaks off. But um, x2 then is x1 minus f of x1 over f prime of x1. And in general, xn plus 1, the next guess, is your current guess, whoops, uh, equals your current guess minus f the function at your current guess minus the derivative at your current guess. Right? This is the, what's called the Newton's method formula. Let's do an example and see how this works. So the example that I want to do is I want to solve this equation, or at least approximate a solution. Right. Um, x squared equals, sorry, x squared minus 2 equals 0. Okay. Now, I have an algebraic way of doing this. I can see that, you know, if I add 2 to both sides and take the square root, that this is going to have intercepts at, it's going to have solutions at plus and minus, square root of 2. Okay. But let, let's do, let's see what this is. So this is my function, f of x. So f of x equals x squared minus 2. So f prime of x is 2x. And my Newton's method solution looks like xn plus 1 equals xn minus, and I've got the function evaluated at xn, so that would be xn squared minus 2, divided by the derivative, so 2xn. Okay. And let's try something. Let's say, you know, I think it's about let's say x0, you know, I'm just going to pick a number, I'm going to say 2, okay, so my first guess is 2, so my next guess is 2 minus, and I'm going to plug in a 2 every place I see an xn, so 2, uh, 2 squared minus 2 over 2 times 2, boy, there's 2's all over the place here, so this is 2 minus, I got 4 minus 2 is 2 on top, and I've got 2 times 2 is 4 on the bottom, so I've got, uh, one and a half, 1.5. So now I want to take the 1.5 and do the same thing to it. So x2 is 1.5 minus, I'm plugging into there, 1.5 squared minus 2 over 2 times 1.5, which is equal to 1.416666 and so on. So you may have noticed the pause there and I went to my calculator to get it. Uh, this becomes um, very 
time-consuming here uh, and tedious calculations uh, to do by hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to do it on the calculator. In fact, I'm going to show you a way of doing this um, really slick on the calculator. Um, I'm going to use um, an app here, which is the TI Inspire app. Um, this what I'm about to do is about the same as the same syntax as what you do on any of the TI calculators here. So what I'm going to do is say um, my, my first guess was 2, and then I say enter. Okay, So 2 was my input, 2 is my output. Next, I'm going to plug this into Newton's method. So what am I going to do? Second function of the negative sign is answer. Up here, it's, it's right here. I want answer minus, in parentheses, uh, now I'm going to plug it into the function. So I want the answer squared. How do I do squared? Answer squared minus 2, close parentheses, divided by, and now I need the derivative, which was 2 times the answer. So any place you see an xn, I'm using answer. So it's the previous output. Answer is always the previous output. So then I say enter, and it should calculate the 1.5, which is my what I got before. The thing about these TIs now, if I just hit enter again, it's going to do the same calculation it just did. So it's going to do this calculation again, but it knows that that was an answer plugged in. And so when I hit enter again, it calculates the 1.41666. So it's automatically see it's taking the 1.5 and plugging it in wherever the answer was before and so then I hit enter again and you're even if you have a TI 83 or you know it'll it'll do this um, so now it's plugging in the 1.414 whatever and it's it's got there and see I'm already up to 1.41422 if I enter again 1.421 and um, and you can see that very quickly I get um, I get the same output as input. Actually, you can it's rounding it here, but you can see what my last output was. Uh, or here it was 1.414215. Let me hit it one more time. Uh, wow, these are good. One more time. Those two are the same. So I, I'm I'm looking at 1.414213562374. As um, as my answer here. Um, in fact, if I actually ask the calculator, what's the square root of two? Because I know that's what the answer should be. Uh, it's giving me uh, one point four one four two. All right, it's giving me this answer. Newton's method works pretty fast when it's when it works. We'll show you a couple other examples in some videos, and then show some places where Newton's method doesn't work.